What is going on, everybody? What is going on? The Catch Fam, my name is John Dawson, and in today's video, we will be hopping into another 2023 Fantasy Football Mock Draft. For the purpose of today's video, we are drafting from the 1.10. This is a 12-team format, full PPR, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, two flex spots, kicker and defense, and five bench spots requested by one of our subscribers that I draft from the 1.10 with a heavy wide receiver strategy, zero running back strategy in this format. That's what we're going to do because it is mock draft season here at The Catch. This is what I do every month of August for you guys as long as you are subscribed to the channel. Happy to put together a video just like this one where I give you guys round by round roster construction advice. You can let me know regardless of format, half PPR, full PPR, 12 teams, eight teams, three wide receivers, super flex, whatever it may be. Let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, as long as you're subscribed, I'll put together a video just like this one for you guys. So hit the like button, subscribe, do all that stuff. It really helps me out and drop any other comments you guys may have pertaining to the 2023 fantasy football season down below. And without further ado, let's not waste any more time. Let's hop into today's video. All right. So for the purpose of today's video, like I said, we are drafting from the 1.10 and we are going zero running back aggressive at wide receiver through the first four rounds. So not too much that we really need to hit on while we're going through each round because we already know what we're going to do for today's strategy. And generally speaking, you know, I am typically going zero running back or hero running back anyways in full PPR double flex format. So no problem really running this particular strategy, but we'll just kind of look round by round at who our specific targets are going to be. So sitting at the 1.10, the wide receiver that I prefer is CD lamb. You know, there's definitely the possibility that he goes earlier off the board, but if he's sitting there, I'm smashing the draft button all day long. Okay. But if he's not there, AJ Brown is perfectly fine. And I don't even have a problem going Amon Ross St. Brown as early as the 1.10, but let's go ahead and take AJ Brown. CD lambs off the board. Amon Ra, I'm literally fine with at the 1.10. You know, I have talked about him throughout the entire offseason. I'm surprised that he hasn't really moved up a little bit higher towards that kind of CeeDee Lamb, Stefan Diggs range. You know, he continues to be a 1.12 selection or as late as a 2.4. Nonetheless, I just have a ton of faith in Amon Ra going into the season. But A.J. Brown is just a hard player for me to pass on, you know, if uh, CD Lamb has already been selected. AJ Brown is still the player that I prefer right there. But like I said, Amon Raw, nothing wrong with that as well. Okay, moving to the 2.3. Top available wide receivers. Devontae Adams, Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave. Really the only guys in this range that we're going to take a look at. You know, T. Higgins, Devonta Smith. I think Devonta Smith, you could argue over T. Higgins, but nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go with the old reliable. Devontae Adams. Okay. And I do like Jalen Waddle right there. If you prefer Jalen Waddle, I'm not necessarily against it. But for me, I'm going to go in and go Adams. Your wide receiver three last year. He takes a pretty big hit with, you know, the quarterback change going from Carr to Garoppolo. And it's not like Garoppolo is necessarily awful, but Derek Carr fits Devontae Adams' game better. Derek Carr was uh, one of the top deep ball throwers in the NFL last year, which really benefited uh, Devonte Adams. But even when you look at those games where Derek Carr wasn't present last year, you know, he fared pretty much. Okay. 34 points against San Francisco in week 17 with Jared Stidham at quarterback and 12 points in week 18. So I think Adams is going to be okay. And I think he's a good value in that range, but you know, if you prefer, you know, maybe some more upside, maybe Waddle or Alave are your selections there. I will say if St. Brown or Garrett Wilson are available in that spot, I'm taking them over Adams, but Adams perfectly fine in that range. And, you know, maybe if you want to go for some more risk at the 1.10, potentially maybe go with a player like Amon Ross, St. Brown or Garrett Wilson, you know, Devonte Adams is a good wide receiver too in a build like that. But nonetheless, I think we're in a good spot here. I mean, we have the wide receiver six from last year in AJ Brown, and then we had the wide receiver three from last year in Devonte Adams. So ultimately, you know, we're looking at last year's rankings, which is not always the best way to to look at things. But nonetheless, we're we're sitting pretty good here, and I think you know, two good veteran wide receivers to start this build. So moving along to the three point ten and the four point three. You know, Calvin Ridley's not going to fall, but he's our, our ideal target. 
Amari Cooper might fall. Depends on who you're drafting with. I mean, Cooper can go as early as like the 3.2 and as late as, you know, the 3.10, 3.11. But I do prefer Cooper in this range. He probably won't be there. So moving along, I love DJ Moore. I mean, if you guys have been following the channel, I've been a huge DJ Moore fan and supporter. I'm an advocate of DJ Moore throughout the offseason. And if he's there, we're going to smash the draft button. I don't really care what anyone has to say about it. Uh, but there's also the potential we can get DJ Moore at like the 4.3. Once again, it depends on who you're drafting with because his ADP right now, especially after the week one preseason performance, is kind of fluctuating. So I do believe that in a lot of leagues, you know, if you're drafting towards the end of August, which you're getting closer and closer to, or if you're drafting the first week of September, you'll probably see DJ Moore towards the end of the third more than often. But nonetheless, Amari Cooper, DJ Moore are top targets. You know, I just prefer those guys in this range. I still like Debo Samuel and there goes DJ Moore. Like, you know, and like, I know this specific member of our community is drafting with uh, ESPN's ADP and range because he, his home league is in ESPN. Uh, and maybe, I don't know off the top of my head, but maybe DJ Moore is going earlier in ESPN uh, rankings. Not exactly sure, but yeah, DJ Moore can go as early as the 3.5. You know, there are enough fancy managers out there who have that faith in him. And, you know, in this range, prefer him and want to take the upside in DJ Moore at this range in the draft. And I don't have a problem with it. But, yeah, the other guy that I, I'm okay with in this range is still Debo Samuel. Like, yeah, you know, I prefer Debo's wide receiver three or wide receiver four, which in this build he would be. So I'm okay with that. And I, I get that, you know, after last year, there are enough people who are kind of down on Debo who are going to go in and take. But I think that Debo is perfectly oh. Okay, especially as a wide receiver three or wide receiver four, which in this build he's going to be. So, you know, I'll take Debo right here. I prefer Cooper or DJ Moore, but Debo is okay. So now when we look at things, AJ Brown, Devontae Adams, Debo Samuel. Pretty veteran-esque. So looking at the 4.3, we want a younger guy, a guy who, you know, maybe won't be necessarily always consistent, but is a really good flex option, right? And when you're going aggressive at wide receivers, you are running back in a double flex format. You know, you're trying to fill the wide receiver one and two spots, obviously, but then we're obviously filling the flex one and flex two spots. So that's what we're looking to do here. And I think for that fourth wide receiver, we just go for upside. Consistency doesn't necessarily matter. So, you know, Hopkins, McLaurin, Judy, Godwin, all on the board here. I think those guys give you a safe floor, but not necessarily a high ceiling. So I'm going to go Christian Watson here, but I will say I love Christian Kirk right here as well. I'm going to go Watson, bring the upside to the table. I'm good with it. I do like Brandon Ayuk in this range. I don't want to draft both Debo and Brandon Ayuk though. But like I said, Christian Kirk, I will draft him against his ADP all day long right here. He's perfectly fine as a wide receiver four right there. But like I said, let's go for a little bit of upside with the fact that we have Brown, Adams, and Debo. And, you know, really Adams and Debo. I think Brown is going to bring enough upside himself. But Watson is our wide receiver for tonight. But seriously, big asterisk. I do not mind Christian Kirk in that range whatsoever. Nonetheless, let's move along. All right, we've got our four wide receivers off the board. So plenty of spots that we still need to fill. Obviously, we need to start to think about quarterback and tight end. What's our game plan going to be for those two positions? We'll find out. It has been a pretty light quarterback draft so far. We'll see what happens. At some point in the beginning of the fifth, we're going to see, you know, at least Burrow and Lamar start to go and possibly Fields as well. So we'll kind of see. We might be in the range to where we can get a good value. Maybe uh, Fields falls to us. Maybe we just want to go ahead and take T. or Herbert. But for tight end, I'm just going to fade the tight end position. You know, in a 12-team double flex, I'm fading tight end. I'm getting Komet late. I'm getting Njoku late. I'm getting Fryer, Muther, Ingram late. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just not thinking about it. But what we do need to think about, because we're going zero running back, is at this point in the draft, we need to start to think about the running back position, right? So who's going to be there at the 5.10? Depends on your draft, but ultimately, this has been a light, draft at the running back position so far okay so there are some names here you know we're moving into the end of the fourth Brees hall etn are still available mixon jones sanders dobbins the next top rated back so looking at the 510 i want to get some consistency at the position or some upside you know between the 510 and 63 i want one guy who i think brings consistency to the table at the running back position then i want someone who brings 
upside to the table as well. So Alexander Madison, I don't really love him. But in that range, I do think that he's a consistency factor. Miles Sanders, I like. I just don't think he's going to be there at the 5'10". And if he's there, we'll take him. But once again, I do think he brings consistency to the table. DeAndre Swift, pure upside pick, and I love it. I'll take DeAndre Swift as an RB2 all day long. If I have to you know, kind of take him before taking one of those guys who I feel is more consistent, then I'm okay with that as well. Because on the t- next turn, you know, Cam Akers, Rashad White, there are names there who still bring some upside to the table. So let's just go ahead and see what happens. The fifth round is starting. We're just going to go ahead and target two running backs because ultimately, you know, even if you're going zero running back, you can't just completely neglect the position. You know, we're kind of in the, you know, area where these guys start to become like RB2 type ranges. And if we pass and we wait on our second running back to the 7 10, 8 3, we're probably just going to be setting ourselves up for kind of a rough position, right? You know, if you are going hero running back and you take a running back in the first four rounds, then you can kind of start to play with the RB dead zone a little bit more. But if you're going pure zero running back through the first four rounds, it's just too much of a risk in my opinion. So we'll go ahead and we'll knock out two running backs. The only other move I would consider here is going quarterback if a quarterback just falls to us that we just feel like we can't pass up. And I will note that Christian Kirk is still on the board, which I don't think you're really going to see. And I imagine him going with one of these next coming picks. But if Christian Kirk's sitting there, he's going to be a tough player for me to pass on. But I think keeping this build realistic will probably pass on Christian Kirk because I just don't think he'll be there. I do like Hollywood Brown, Tyler Lockett, Michael Pittman. There are other names here. But uh, and then there's even later round guys that are coming up, you know, Jahan Dotson, Zay Flowers, for example. But I think ultimately we just have to go running back here. There goes Fields. As much as I like Herbert and as much as I like T-Law, I think ultimately we just go back to back running backs. But I'm just telling you, it's so hard for me to pass on Christian Kirk right here. I just don't think it's realistic. I really don't. You know, I, I think in plenty of drafts, maybe he'll go in the fifth round. And a majority of the drafts that I'm going to be in, he won't be there. So let's go ahead. Let's go Alexander Madison. Let's get that consistency piece. And then let's go for upside of the running back position at 6.3. Uh, yeah, Kirk is just a steal right here. You know, I mean, I guess fifth round is where you're seeing him go in, in some drafts. But the drafts that I'm used to because I'm so high on him, he's just been going much, much earlier. I mean, like beginning of the fifth middle of the fourth, much earlier overall. But yeah, hard for me to pass on Christian Kirk there, especially because I was considering him at the 4.3. But we're going to stick to the game plan because that's what we're doing today. We're giving round by round roster construction advice. So let's go Swift here. Here's our RB2. We kind of get that guy who's got a safe floor, maybe not as high of a ceiling. The Vikings are going to throw the football a ton. You know, Cook was fine last year. Is your RB11. If we get a top 12 value out of Madison, that's great right here, right? I just don't think the ceiling's too high. Swift, the consistency might not be there, but the upside's there. And I've talked about Swift like in every video. I, I don't want to keep, you know, beating a dead horse, but I love DeAndre Swift this year. Love him as an RB2, especially if you go hero running back. Like, you know, if you get a running back in the first, like if, you, if we went Barkley at the uh, 1.10, for example, and that was our hero running back. And then we went Adams, Debo, Watson, Kirk. That'd be a really good start, by the way. Um, and then Swift was our RB2. I would really like that build as well. So Swift, you know, whether you're going hero running back, zero running back, as an RB2, I just absolutely love him. Listen, the Eagles are going to be able to maximize DeAndre Swift's skill set. I've talked about Kenneth Gainwell a lot throughout the offseason, offseason as well, excuse me. And I still like Gainwell, and I'm actually happy to hear that we're getting reports that he's getting a lot of the first-team reps. But Swift is going to be on the field when they want to throw to a running back, when they want that kind of home run-esque play, and probably on a lot of third downs as well. Swift is going to be heavily utilized within this offense, and he doesn't have all the pressure on him. You know, Gainwell is going to get touches. Penny is going to get touches. At times, Boston Scott will get touches, and then – Jalen Hurts, even coming off of a massive contract, is still going to run the football at times. That's going to keep the defense honest. When Swift's on the field, that's going to help Swift. Plus, you got Goddard out there. You got Smith out there. 
Of course, you got A.J. Brown out there. It's just going to be a tough offense to line up against at the end of the day. So I love Swift. I, I don't want to talk too much about it because I feel like if you guys sit down and watch a couple of these videos, you're just going to hear me talk a lot about DeAndre Swift. But I think he's a good value there in the six. OK, let's move along. Still a lot of drafting left. So we still want to continue to build wide receiver depth. I think that's really important in these double flex formats, full PPR formats. You really can't ever have too much wide receiver depth. So let's start to take a look at who could be available at the 710, 8.3, just to see if there's a name we don't want to pass up on. And for me, Zay Flowers, who could go at any range. Zay Flowers ADP is all over the place. He's the number one guy that I want to share of at this point in the draft. But Deontay Johnson is available. If he falls, I love Deontay Johnson in full PPR in this range. Quentin Johnston, another guy that I would definitely consider. And I do like Cortland Sutton as well. So let's go back to running backs. There are a couple names that I like here. And we do need to definitely take a look at our RB3 in this range as well. So looks like we're going to continue to fade quarterback and tight end one more round. But Isaiah Pacheco, David Montgomery, James Cook, A.J. Dillon, Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson, all available. You know, you could argue we could go back-to-back -back running backs here, which is okay. But I think for our RB4, we target like a Jarek McKinnon, Devon A. Shane, Damian Harris-type running back. And uh, nonetheless, Pacheco or Monty with his next pick would make me really happy for our third running back, especially with Zay Flowers off the board. Uh, there goes George Kittle, so... I don't really mind Pacheco or Monty. I think both are going to have solid years, but being that we can kind of target McKinnon a little bit later, I would say Monty is my top target. If we go Pacheco, I'm okay with it. We'll see who goes off the board here at 7.9. Then we just go best available wide receiver at the 8.3. So there goes Monty. <laughs> uh, let's go Pacheco. It, that's fine. You know, if we don't feel like we want to double dip into that backfield, I still like Devon A. Shane in that range. I think Damian Harris is okay. You know, I do really like Gibson, A.J. Dillon, even James Cook in this range, but Pacheco is just a guy who I feel like is going to have a very good year. So I'm happy with Pacheco as our RB3, our first bench player for this build. And let's go ahead and snag just the best available wide receiver with this next pick. So the three guys I have on the queue right now, Cortland Sutton, Quentin Johnston, and Sky Moore. I like all these names. Okay, Quinn Johnson, I think, you know, you have to start considering at any point in your draft taking a rookie wide receiver because the trend in the past couple of years is that rookie wide receivers are productive. Okay, he's in a good offense. He's in a good position overall. Herbert's, oh no, Herbert's far gone, excuse me. But say, is Herbert still available because, uh, okay, he's not. Scratch that. But nonetheless, I really like Cortland Sutton here as well. I know that doesn't excite a lot of people, but I'm actually going to take him here, and I'll tell you guys why. And like I said, I don't have a problem with Quentin Johnson. He's kind of the upside pick there, a little bit more risk in his rookie season. And I don't mind Sky Moore, but Sky Moore has a higher likelihood of falling out. But his ADP, similar to Zay Flowers, all over the place. Those are guys that fantasy managers want. But Cortland Sutton, okay? If you think this offense is going to improve, which week one in the preseason didn't really give us a lot of confidence, but... If you think it's going to improve, Sutton should improve, right? When you look at last year, double digits. Every game he was healthy except for four. The ceiling was low. It was typically getting you like 12 or 13 points a couple weeks in there, you know, 19, 17, 16. But most weeks were like 12 to 13 points. Ceiling was low. Floor was pretty safe, which is okay. Like as a flex option, as a bench option, that's okay. At least you can throw them into your lineup in, you know, on most weeks, know that you're going to get like 10 to 12 points. So do we want to, you know, go out and target players with low ceilings? Not necessarily, but ultimately I'm okay with Sun in this range as a wide receiver five. And like I said, you know, full PPR, double flex formats, you've got to have depth on the bench because throughout the year, you're going to buy weeks A and B injuries are going to occur at the wide receiver position. It's just natural. You know, I, you look at last year, right? You know, Watson missed time basically almost the entire first half of the year. Debo was banged up last year. You know, Adams brings that consistency to the table. That's part of the reason why you go out and draft a veteran like him. He didn't miss any time. And A.J. Brown obviously had a very good season as well. He didn't miss any time. He had that, like, eye injury in the middle of the year. But ultimately, you know, if you draft four wide receivers to start your draft, like, at least – 
one or two of those guys is going to miss some time of the year, even if it's not drastic time. So you want that depth at the wide receiver position. Okay, so two good picks there. I think two good values in Pacheco and Cortland Sutton. Let's move along to the 9.10 and the 10.3. There's some good tight ends available. We might go ahead and snag a tight end. Let's take a look at the board. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams with tight ends. Evan Engram, Pat Farmuth, and Joku Schultz commit on the board. You know, either way, we should be able to land a pretty good value tight end. So we'll see who's available as we move up to the 9.10. We still want to get that fourth running back. Devon A. Shane, Jarek McKinnon, Jamal Williams, Damian Harris, the names I'm looking at. And I think McKinnon's probably going to be there, which, you know, I, I do think Pacheco is the running back I prefer over Cook and Gibson, but it's still close. And I do like A.J. Dillon in that range. But yeah, you know, you got to think, do you really want to double dip into backfields? If you don't, then maybe you think about going with a different running back over Pacheco there. But I think A. Shane is our top target. I just, I still like the upside that he brings to the table. But I was about to say, if Sky Moore falls to us, we're smashing the draft button, but he does not fall. And there goes A. Shane as well. So I do feel like Jared McKinnon, who, who's off the board, okay, is the best available player. But now we're kind of in, in this position where, like, we kind of just got decimated. And let's just take the best available player. I think that's Pat Fryermuth at the tight end position. And Joku's fine. Komet's fine. Even Dalton Schultz. You know, there are other names here in Conquo. Kincaid, Higby. Uh, Greg Dulcich has kind of fallen down in rankings a little bit. But I still like Greg Dulcich, too. But let's just take the best available player. Sometimes that happens. Like, our Q just got wiped out. Sky Moore, Devon A. Shea, Jared McKenna. It's okay. It's okay. But then with this next following pick, we either go best available wide receiver or best available running back. And at this point in the draft, I think the best available running back is more important. So uh, Damian Harris is a player that I prefer here. You know, I, I like James Cook, but I think Harris gets that kind of bell cow style, you know, work. And I think that's who we're going to go in and take. So let's take Damian Harris as our RB4. I like him in this range. I'm fine with it. It's not great. It's never going to be great at this point in the draft, but it is what it is. So now when we look at things, we've got two bench spots and a quarterback spot, and then obviously kicker and defense, which we're not going to do a ton of evaluation on. So here's the thing about going late round quarterback, because ultimately the way I'd like to finish this draft is probably another running back and another wide receiver, right? And you could kind of make that call as you get to the 11.10, 12.3, 13.10, whatever it may be, right? Do you think there's good enough running back value on the board that you take another running back? Or do you just go into your year with four running backs and redraft? I think that's okay. If there's value on the board and you want to take another running back, then you can go for it. I don't quite know that there's going to be enough value for me to take a fifth running back. But you can obviously look at this roster and say running back is, you know, the glaring kind of a uh, hole on the team, right? I think we go either two wide receivers to end the draft. I don't think there's going to be any running backs that I really want to take unless Jamal Williams falls out. At least you get those first couple weeks, right? Everyone else, I think you can fight for on the waiver wire. Devin Singletary, Donta Foreman, Tank Bigsby, Roshan Johnson. You know, maybe we take like Zamir White with one of our last picks, but you guys get the point, okay? So now we kind of look at, do we want to go double wide receiver? But getting back to my main point, do we want to draft two quarterbacks? Because if you do go late round quarterback, you know, two was already gone. Prescott's gone. Richardson's gone. Okay. So at this point, starting to look at things and we're like, maybe I don't feel great about the quarterback position. Rogers, Cousins, Geno, Jones, Goff. So I do believe in kind of going like anchor quarterback, so to speak, where you get two quarterbacks at this point in your draft. And as the season goes on, you just kind of figure it out. You might not have to roster both quarterbacks the whole year. I mean, I had a team last year that was very successful that I drafted Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. And I mean, I know Cousins was QB six on the year, but the quarterbacks that I finished the year with were Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. So do I necessarily think that's going to happen this year? I'm not quite sure. But there's always the potential for that sort of situation to work out. And obviously, if I kept Kirk Cousins, I probably would have been fine too. But nonetheless, 
I think we're going to take two quarterbacks and then go best available wide receiver at 13.10. Romeo Dobbs in this range is a name that I would absolutely take here at the 11.10 if he was available. Let's go Danny Dimes. I know some of you guys hate it out there. Some of you guys don't mind it. I think he does bring some upside to the table, though. Showed so much improvement last year. Got the big contract. Showed that he actually has some rushing ability, which we always kind of knew, but really showed it last year. 700 rushing yards, seven rushing touchdowns. And then you look at the playmakers around him. Are they phenomenal? No, but Paris Campbell, Jamison Crowder, Cole Beasley, Isaiah Hodgins, Jalen Hyatt, Darius Slayton, uh, Sterling Shepard, Darren Waller, Daniel Bellinger, Saquon in the backfield, somebody's going to get it done for him, right? There are enough guys here that it can get done. Then let's take a stability piece. Give me Captain Kirk, okay? So yeah, there we go. Two quarterbacks, kind of anchor quarterback strategy, so to speak. Then we'll take the best available wide receiver with this next coming selection. Who's going to be there? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's so late in the draft that you're kind of taking a shot no matter what. I prefer Rashid Shahid, but he is a popular name amongst you know the fantasy community and amongst the community that I'm drafting with as well. So I don't quite know if he's going to be available. There are other names I like, though. Uh, Van Jefferson, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Maybe you take a shot on like a Tank Dell or Marvin Mims, get a rookie wide receiver. I don't mind Isaiah Hodgins in that range. We'll figure it out. We're just going to go best available wide receiver, draft a kicker, draft a defense, and then that's going to wrap things up. So like I said at the beginning of the video, if you guys have any mock draft requests, seriously, I do this every August. doesn't matter what the format is. I've been getting a lot of requests for eight team formats lately. I'll do eight team drafts. I'll do 14 team drafts, half PPR, full PPR, even standard, which I don't really play in and in, in, in any capacity anymore. I don't really play half PPR, but I have experience and I can certainly help you guys out. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, if it's super flex, three wide receivers, double flex, whatever you guys need, I'm happy to help you out. Make a video just like this one. And, you know, I can always set up, you know, uh, for one of our live streams in the future to be uh, a live stream where you guys uh, have a requested mock style as well. But be sure to join our free discord. That link is in the description down below. Uh, we have tons of mock drafts ran every day. I mean, some days there's literally like 20 to 30 mock drafts being ran by the community. And uh, that's also where I send out my mock draft invites for our live streams as well. So make sure you guys uh, join. And uh, you can also post your own mock drafts on there as well. So at any point, you know, real members of our fantasy community will come out, help you uh, mock draft, compete against you. You'll get a better feel than if you're mock drafting with the computer or going on Yahoo and people are leaving halfway through the draft or uh, whatever it may be. So do all that stuff. Make sure you guys subscribe and I uh, hope you guys found today's video helpful. And nonetheless, we'll kind of see how things play out here at the end of the draft. So like I said, plenty of wide receivers I like in this range, but I really do prefer Rashid Shahid. So I'm kind of hoping that he falls to us at the 13.10, which sounds kind of weird saying out loud, but Rashid Shahid is popular enough that in, in certain drafts, he has to fall to you in the 13th round because there are enough drafts where he's going in like the 11th and 12th round. And, you know, I just think he brings so much upside to the table, showed so much promise in his rookie season. And now you get Derek Carr in that offense who, like I mentioned earlier in the video, throws a deep ball more than any other quarterback in the league last year. Shahid should definitely benefit from that. That's his style of play. Yeah, I like Alave a lot. I understand that Michael Thomas should be around if he's alive this year. You've got a good tight end room there. You've got a lot of running backs, but I think that Shahid is in a good position to succeed. So, you know, as our wide receiver six, absolutely love that. So I think a pretty decent roster tonight. Uh, you know, I think for going zero running back, we did about just as good as we could. And, you know, I do think if you go zero running back, one of the sacrifices you make is you ultimately end up going late round quarterback and essentially late round tight end as well. Because then you have to start knocking out some value at running back. And then you still have to worry, you know, in a double flex format about some wide receiver depth as well. But I think things turned out pretty OK today. I think Shahid was a good value in the 13th. So it um, doesn't really matter, you know, if you draft kicker or defense first, but just, you know, I like the Ravens defense. I like the Patriots defense. I'll go Pats. They were defense one, like the last two years in fantasy or whatever, or 
defense two in 2021, defense one last year. Then we'll draft a kicker, and that'll do it for today's video. So let's take a look at the team. I'm not going to make you guys wait to see what kicker I land. Just stream kickers and defense. Don't reach for them, guys. But all right, we'd be starting Danny Dimes or Kirk Cousins. That's okay. Hopefully there are like more upside options that emerge on the waiver wire, but I'm okay with Jones and Cousins. They'll get you through. It's definitely, you know, the point differential between those guys and a Josh Allen or Patty Mahomes is huge, but we're looking for upside at other positions, right? Friar Muth at tight end. I love that value in the ninth round. Madison Swift, Pacheco, Harris. We're going zero running back. I'm okay with that, okay? Madison brings the consistency. Swift gives, up the, gives us the upside, excuse me. Pacheco and Harris, fine as bench options, right? And I like Pacheco on the bench a lot, actually. All right, wide receivers, Brown, Adams, Debo, Watson, Sutton, Shahid. I love that wide receiver room. I really do. And I think in a double flex format, this is a great wide receiver room. So we'd be starting A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, flexing Debo Samuel, flexing Christian Watson, Sutton, and Shahid on the bench. We're in a good position here. So there is a look from the 1.10 full PPR double flex format what you might end up with if you go zero running back and you go aggressive at wide receiver, grab four wide receivers in the first four rounds. So you guys know what to do. Do all the YouTube stuff. I hope you guys found today's video enjoyable and or helpful. If you did, hit the like, hit the subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of today's video as a whole, but of today's draft as well with a specific strategy. And please, 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 if you guys have any mock draft requests, let me know down below. You guys already got the spiel. It doesn't matter what format. I'll get it put on the schedule. Happy to make a video just like this one for you guys and hopefully help you guys have a successful draft heading into the 2023 fantasy football season. So we'll go ahead. I mean, we're already here. We'll see what kicker I land just to make it a full mock draft. And then I'm going to go ahead and close out the video. So it's probably just going to be Nick Folk, Graham Gano. Yeah, it's going to be Nick Folk. So that's going to do it for the video today. And uh, there's your full team. Hope you guys enjoyed it. With that, I will say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.